today, like we we don't want to take much longer time because it's uh, Saturday and people are already getting ready and dreaming about Cable Mountain and Water Park and 5D. Yeah, so we'll go through some of the uh, uh, the basic things, but also one of the important part is. Like every, every country, like Solomon Islands and other people, we're saying, like, how do we start with the training program in our country? Yeah, so now Matthew will talk about, about that one. Yeah. Um, okay, Matthew. <coughs> so before talking about the training on itself or themselves, we need to know who can actually train, who has the abilities to train, and what uh, what does it require to train national teams uh, or local teams? <coughs> because the one, the, the the people in this room who will get the certificates. They, it means to, to, to us that they became what we call super users, okay? And I guess that one, at least for a few of you, one of the mission for you to be here is probably to get back, hopefully, to get back home and tell other people how DHIS2 works and for some of you to train other people on how DHIS2 works when you are in your national rollout or if you're upgrading from a previous version to the new version etc okay so a, f a first very important uh, mindset is that users uh, super users need to to be obviously a little bit project oriented right so they need to when something is is wrong or when they want to analyze something within uh, the IT area, so HMIS, they need they need first to decide what needs to be changed. So that's the I think there's a cool feature here. Yeah. So they need to decide what uh, what needs to be changed, and then then they need to decide how to change it. They then then they they sorry they then then do the change. And they see what is the, mo the w what's what what effect does the change bring to uh, to the system, and then they c compare this uh, this change with what they wanted to see, and so basically we are we are looking for super users who have this ability of not staying into this uh, uh, one flow. Uh, modes but uh, who are capable of touching uh, touching things and uh, checking how to make things better so but with a certain methodology ov obviously if you see an error in a, i don't know if you see an error in a in a pivot table for instance if you change three dimensional time you will never find the error right you have to go step by step so uh, you change one thing, you you see the result, and if, if the result is what you were expecting, then you found uh, the the mistake or maybe the data to be changed or whatsoever. If you change three-dimensional time, you will never find uh, what was the actual cause. So experimenting obviously is good, but you need to uh, you need to do this in a with some methodology. You need to think about what you're doing. Then for, for this slide, understanding data structures, obviously, well, you are in DHIS2 world, so when you're doing things, you need to do that according to, uh, to the way data is structured in DHIS2. And I will let uh, John <laughs> talk about this one. <laughs> Actually, like it's uh, everyone knows this one, right? Okay. Instead of uh, me explaining, let me just like pass on to someone to explain. It's better. Let's just see how much. Um, someone from uh, 
that grip here. So what is this? Sorry. Yeah, when we are talking about the slides, and then like people say, mm, okay, and that's why it's always good to just give it to the one of the participant. <laughs> okay, <laughs> explain this slide. <laughs> because like everyone knows this one. Yeah, that's a summary of previous of this week. Yeah. So uh, now I, I can see some data elements like uh, I folate given at uh, A and C third. Like uh, those are being categorized into. No, no. Uh, what, 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 one more second. Eh? When we have this slide, first it's understanding data structure. That's the main aim. So either you start from the top, either you start from the bottom. Okay, always start from the top, and it's a reproductive health data set. Under this data set, we have a section called ANC. Under ANC, we have all these different data items. ANC 1, ANC 2nd, IFA, mother are the data elements. And then? Uh, then uh, uh, there's disaggregation uh, using category combinations. Yeah. And. Uh, what are the category combination here we have, or what are the categories? Categories, uh, HIV, teenage, uh, and uh, categories are uh, uh, HIV uh, status and uh, uh, motherhood. Age. Age. Yeah, so and these HIV two are status. category. Okay, or call that also concept, but categories. HIV status and then age. And age has an option called teenage and adult. Yeah, and HIV status has HIV minus one and HIV plus. Okay, so those are options. Fine, is this correct? Can we do this one in DHIS? So if you want to do it in this DHIS, how do we start? So if you want to set this one in DHIS, how do we start? First, you create data element. Really? First, we start always with uh, the bottom, eh? Because data element, we need to assign. You can start with data element, but like you still need to assign, right? So we need to assign category combination to a data element. So first, we identify what are all the different options we have, and we check in DHIS whether those options are there. We check the category, whether this category is already there. If not, we create it. And we look, okay, both the categories are there, then we combine that one, and then we start creating the data items. It's one of the, the simple rules what we follow up. Huh? So first we look at the, all the disaggregation, and we check whether it is there. And then we can add all the uh, data elements. We add the data elements, put them in the group, and then what we do? We create sections. Yes? How many people said yes? Can we create section without data set? We create these data elements, and put that one in data set called reproductive and child health, and after data set, we create sections. Right? So we create option, categories, category combination, assign that one to a data element, <coughs> and data element to a data element group. That's fine. And then we create a data set called reproductive and child health and assign this data element into the data set. And once the data set is defined, then you create the sections. Fine? Okay? Okay. <laughs> One more time. When we have these kind of things to, to start, we always start with options. First, we identify the options and we check in DHIS whether those options are there. If it is not there, then we create it. From the options, we create category. And then we see, OK, here we have two category combinations. So then we create them in the combination. After creating the combination, 
we create the data elements. And when we create the data element, it's a best practice to assign data element to data element groups. Let's say ANC group or uh, this ANC it can also be a group. Eh? So you can create it as a group. Once you create it in the group, and then we create data set, which is reproducing child health. Assign that one, say, like monthly. And then we include all the data element to the data set. Once the data element is there in the data set, then we create sections. Section can be created as a tab, or like a below that we saw, like Martin and Thuy showed about the sections, right? OK? Data set first, and then the section. OK? Now, just to wake you up and to make more uh, attentive, now in the morning, it's, you know, like we sometimes we don't really have coffee or tea and things we need to wake up. And <laughs> so, as super users, it's very, very important that you understand that data structure, huh? because, because you, will, you, you will face questions, obviously. I mean, you just don't deliver a message, then they go. Huh? You, you will face questions, and you will have to answer a question, and ideally your, question, your answers are accurate. So that's, that's, that's a key, and, well, and we put it here because, because it sums up the whole week. So uh, then you have, a, it's a good summary for Saturday, then you can think of it on Sunday. So thinking while experimenting requires understanding as you might have understood. One more time. <laughs> so one more person to wake up now. OK, let's see. All the way from the back. OK, the um, one, two, three, four, fifth group. Can you explain this? What is this one is about? Um, uh, M? Is the mic? We have a health person there, right? OK. Uh, just click on the mute. It's fine. Um, this chart shows, uh, it's a pie chart of a Riverside Clinic in for June 2013. For maybe attendances, e uh, cases, one third is uh, new antenatal cases, one third is uh, diarrhea, and one third uh, cases for respiratory infections. So what does this mean? Um, the chart is not very <laughs> informative in that Sorry? sense. Sorry? Um, the chart doesn't actually uh, doesn't tell much. What does it mean by new antenatal? Is it new, case, uh, new cases? Or, uh, no, you have to be bold. Oh, I have and to be bold. And say, this is a horrible chart. <laughs> it is. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know it, but you don't want to say it. <laughs> I'm being nice. <laughs> <laughs> because most of the people, when they try to compare, you know, this you can't compare at all. Eh? You have new antenatal cases, diarrhea, and respiratory. What is this? DHIS will produce this char kind of chart. But there is no meaning. There is nothing here. This is very, very bad. Like you tell uh, the programmers to to make this one, they will, uh, and then they look, ah, this is very good, very nice. Yeah, very, very nice. <laughs> and then when the health person see, look, what, the, what is this? <laughs> so exactly, I'm just saying. In DHS, you can do this one. It's no problem. It will allow. But DHS does not think, you know. So we have to think. And we have to say, no, nah, this is bad. This is what we, uh, when we choose, we have to have a meaning like why we are doing the analysis, not just like putting the data and like making the things and showing it up. And, okay? And the, you can be bold, always say, no, no, this chart does not miss anything. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Another, another ability. <laughs> 
Now, obviously, it's because of the computer or because of the program, or it's never because of us, huh? When something doesn't work, huh? So that was actually me in uh, Malawi, so in December for basic training. Um, so this worked last time. Why did the computer do something else <laughs> now, right? Um, and then u super users uh, then should have the ability to say, okay, let's start over, you know, like, uh, and be uh, li have a little bit compassion <laughs> with uh, with users, especially at the very beginning. It's very important that you build trust uh, towards the system, else uh, it will not be adopted the way you want it to be adopted. So you need to you need to understand how the user is working and then in order to to put the user on the right track again um, yeah you need you need to use all the tools that are available uh in DHIS and out of DHIS obviously but in DHIS you can you can use. M we will see that, that later. Huh? I think next week. Huh? We will see the messages, uh, messaging uh, options uh, of DHIS. And um, hmm? ah, after this, okay. So just after this session. So ju that's that's an introduction then to next session. Um, so basically, you can use uh, messages in DHIS too in order to send emails to your support team or to other member members of uh, of DH. Uh, that have an account in the DHIS, and then you can ask questions, and then your knowledge will will grow uh, at the same time. And um, yeah, so don't be afraid of asking questions. You know, it's uh, no question is stupid. So you need to say to your users and do it yourselves as well. If it's available, at least in uh, in your in your in your setup, in your national setup, to be able to contact uh, help desk support if you have set up a uh, help desk support, uh, so that people can if th if they don't uh, know even how to log in, then they can just uh, do it. Uh, they can just call and get support. Obviously, don't put the help uh, helpline number or the landline uh <laughs> uh, or any other. And other help um, or su support information while after login because if people cannot log in, they will never see this support. Huh? So it's very important to put that before. We'll go through that as well. But uh, it's super users should should uh, all of you should uh, register to this uh, to this DHIS two uh, mailing list users mailing list in order to 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 have uh, to know how the how things are going on with DHIS and uh, ask questions to the ho the community throughout the world uh, uh, on uh, on how things uh, should work on DHIS. If you have an issue or if you have suggestions, that's what you you will you should do. In in DHIS, we have a few tools that you could uh, you could uh, talk about uh, to your users that uh, when they are a little bit lost, you have. Uh, the usual tooltips that you find on any website and the, the help button so push them push your users to use these tools obviously to to get a better understanding on dhis2 because when you will do a training it will be a two three four days five days max they will not remember everything i mean uh, and we know for instance that you will not remember everything that what we have said you know, but we have to give you tools and uh sort of attitude so that you can actually go and look for things that you you remember that you have gone through it but then so help button is a very good uh, obviously very good feature within the hs2 and tooltips it's a, a small one read the documentation which is on the website and which is within DHIS2, it's the same one, obviously. S it's linking to the same documentation. So today you have user guides, we have implementation guides, we have developer guides. So uh, all all in English and a few in another language, Spanish and, and French mainly. So here as well, 
not not one person or maybe maybe just John, but not one person knows everything about the HIS two, you know. So uh, so uh, you need to l to look for the information, and you need to uh, to do that through different means. You can do it obviously on using search engine, but you can do it uh, using all our internal documentation, internal tools taking back home the presentation that we have gone through and go through it again them again and again and again as a as a uh, as a study I was highlighting that reviewing training material is twice as successful as searching for help so uh, we provide we give you the slides that uh, we went through it's for a reason you will have access to the quiz afterwards it's for a reason it's because then you can you can use some some of the materials but mainly you can use it to for you to to be better at dhis and so um yeah the state of mind is that uh, when you are in trouble experiment as we have seen at the beginning ask and to the support uh, to the community and look up in the documentation and that's something that you want to to say to the users as well because users tend to stick to the issue you know they tend to be frustrated obviously because I the environment will be new it will completely change their habits so they will uh, they will see the screen if they are in front of a laptop and they will think it doesn't work and they will shut down the, the whole thing and they will not report data so that's not what you want or they will just report the uh, wrong data just for the sake of reporting so they end uh, giving up <laughs> or if you give them a little bit of confidence then they try again you know they if it's uh, if the the wrong figure is being displayed you know they well you, you see what i mean so what you 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 really have to tell them that yeah it's not a problem if you do mistakes, and that's why we are ha we are having trainings. The goal is to train. We do the mistake during the training, and then we do better in real life. I guess like it's uh, people have experienced this one before, right? When we don't really get support, even in DHIS, like when we just start with it, like we don't really have the export. Uh, experience or the the support from a local person we just like say ah we give up we go back to our uh, excel or normal way of uh, direct collecting <laughs> it is um, it's just a very nature because it's we we have so much pressure in submitting the report or giving the report to the to the minister or to the program officer we don't have time to read and uh, uh, like make things happen that requires time and we always in so much in pressure, like, okay, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to work in other places. So we, we anything is small thing which is not working, we just like say, ah, this is bad, it is stupid, so it does not know. Okay, so this is the first starting point. You have also felt it, but like when you train, the other people will also do that. Because like when they also are busy, like they can't really uh, support all the things. So you just always try a few bit harder and then like also, have a support mechanism around you. Yeah, it can be the, uh, the problem with the language. Uh, m maybe like most of the time, like in Tajikistan, I just say, please write a mail. But they don't write a mail because they, they don't feel very comfortable to write a mail. So like it's always having a helpline or people nearby asking, uh, okay, can you please help this one and things. So it will be always good. Yeah, so you, when you do the training and things, it's uh, just make sure that you have some support closely associate and train also multiple people, not individuals. Huh? Yeah, super user ability, experimenting, understanding, yeah, observation, help seeking, information seeking, yeah, and high self efficiency. It's fine. Uh, yeah, just, just just go back to the, the, the slide. Just reading it, but not explaining it. <laughs> yeah, always like when we start with the DHIS, there are lots of different ways to do it. 
You know, like, uh, no, like, I want uh, data in this particular way. I want to aggregate by groups or group sets or by a different ways. So you know what you want to achieve. But there are multiple ways to achieve and multiple uh, uh, tools. A visualizer, PO table, GIS. Yeah, first you need to try to understand what you need to achieve. And then you have to select right tool to do it. And when you select right tool, then you have to do some experiment, especially for, like, say, PO table. Yeah, I want to see disaggregate data. Yeah, by, uh, let's say, the same example, um, teenage mother and then uh, adults. Uh, uh, mother and the teenage and adults, you want to just get the that's disaggregation done. What the DHIS give you just, like, say, total mothers, eh? Or, like, even uh, if you say live births, male and female are disaggregation. But when you go for uh, a PO table, it will just give you live birth total. But what you want is male, how many male and how many female. And then, like you say, okay, I don't know where to find this, how many male and how many female. So then you select from the totals to details, right? In PO table, we have data elements, and each data element will have this total and detail, right? When you select details, it will show all the disaggregation. The age breakup, the gender breakup, it will show all the things, and then you can select and we can view it. So you have to do a bit of experimenting, just click, click. Nothing will happen, don't worry. And the first important thing, you should not fear of using DHIS. Whatever you do, it's, it's okay. Yeah? Anything to do on the services, perfectly fine. Don't worry. Anything to do on the maintenance, always worry. <laughs> okay? Because maintenance is something which is very, very crucial. Don't give any part of maintenance to you, everyone. Person who has good knowledge and like know what he's doing, it's always maintenance. And maintenance, always discuss with people. Let's say if you want to add an indicator or data items or creating a new data set or even organ it, discuss with people and then you can try to do it. You have to get a consensus before you do it. Services, no problem. PO table, visualizer, GIS, uh, validation rules you want to make, no problem. Those things won't affect anything else, okay? That thing you can like do, experiment here. And most of the people say, ah, I always select and it says zero value. Uh, this was uh, uh, one of the person from Lao, um, An. She used to always say, ah, John, I always select it, but like, it always gives me zero value. I don't know why. I'm not viewing the data. A uh, problem is just like maybe you're selecting wrong. You know, like you're not selecting the right place and then the data is not there, but like you're looking at the different reports or different data elements. So you have to make sure like what you select and it, you know what you're trying to do, okay? Don't get frustrated. Eh? You try to do a bit uh, experimenting. Understanding, you have to understand the, the data. For example, when we're creating the validation rules. Now yesterday we had the same problem, right? So we thought bug. This validation rule is not showing because the data element was assigned to both quarterly and monthly. Yeah, monthly data set. That's why like, it was like, not working. So DHS does something good. Eh? And then we need to understand why is that problem is. We need to go all the way down. Just don't say, it's a bug. And when you say, OK, uh, we get mails. We have a bug. I say, OK, what is it? No, there is a bug. No, where is it? <laughs> no, there is a bug. <laughs> they don't give any information. Like, there, there is a bug. Like, it, it's, it's here. I can see it. It's there. <laughs> and like, we are uh, sitting in the email. I say, like, yes, it's there, but like, we can't look at it. Yeah? Like, like, where is it? Is it in data entry module, whether it is visualizer? Just explain. In the visualizer, like when I'm selecting this particular data item and this particular period, we are not seeing the, the data. Yeah, maybe like the analytics was not run, or maybe there was some, uh, some mistake happened. So it will be useful for us to also to see. And then also for you, <coughs> you need to understand where does the problem comes from. Like if you just say, okay, no reports, the no value is showing in the PO table. And then first thing you say, okay, like what data element have you used? Okay, I have taken uh, this data element, but have you, the, is there any data? Can you see that data in the data entry? I said, no, no, there is no data in the data entry, but I want to see in a PO table. I don't want to see any data entry, but there is no data if you entered, you can't see in the PO table, okay? There might be something, understanding problem, or might be something else, but we need to be a bit more patient and like try to understand where does the problem comes from. Maybe like the, you have select two different data items and you are selecting reporting period. 
or you select a completely different report. And then you say, ah, this is showing very wrong data. It's, it's all the numbers, 20.2 delivery. Maybe you're collecting it quarterly and viewing it the data in monthly. Maybe that may be the problem. Maybe it is a data entry mistake. So we need to try to identify where this problem is and try to look whether it is these are the different problem. And once you find it, then you can report it up. Like it's just a bit more about observing. And once you see, okay, there is a real problem and real bug, then you can report to all the different people and say, like, okay, this is the problem, and we can try to help on that one. Okay, and information seeking and, and high efficacy. Yes. Perfect. Just in the last few. Yeah, it's on. Um, just best practices, or if you have anything documented around starting deployment. I, I guess maybe you're assuming you've already been involved and you've designed the national deployment. Um, but then there are some programs, for example, that aren't doing a national deployment. So they have their own objectives and purposes. But it would seem to me um, I might be. It would benefit me, for example, to have a PowerPoint that tells me how to begin. Like, I should spend a lot of time designing my system and developing my data elements and data sets in so that the programs that don't often work together work together and we don't. Um, is there something available? Uh, actually, there are some best practices also in DHI. <laughs> okay. Is there is also lots of best practices in it's available on, the, on online too. How do we start? We also have an implementation plan, like how do you, if you want to start in a particular country, how do you do, there is implementer guidelines. In DHIS, like if you see you have, just say, how do you use a system? Yeah, and that also uh, broke out into end user and uh, users. You also have an implementer guide, like where like it talks about like how do you even set up a server, how do you start, how do you organize your training, how do you create a national HMIS team, where do you start and how do we proceed through it? So we have a detailed implementation guidelines in the on the online, but like uh, we don't really have a very uh, say startup point for designing a program. Yeah, like because it's very very different depending on the the forms or the data what you need to collect. Where do you start with it? The first thing what we always say like it's you start with a national core team. S uh, start making or uh, identifying the national core team who who will be in charge for your HMIs and always include the different departments and the different uh, functionaries, um, public health, uh, technical person, network persons, and all things, and make a, a team. And then that team like uh, get support from the DHS experts, and we can sit down and define with your uh, national core indicators and all, and then based on that one, we can design your data set forms and all. But it's, it's a different, different, um, like for example, in Laos, that's how we are doing. But like in other countries, those things are already set. So you already have a national core indicators. You already have the forms and other things. So and then you have to just uh, want to get the, the data inside. Like most of the health programs, we have a different different stages. Some health programs are like, for example, TB in most of the places has been clearly well defined, like the procedures, how you collect, how you uh, give the feedback, and they just need to automate that one into into a reporting system. And then like we can look down and do all the things. So it's, it's very hard to write a uh, generic way, but like we have best practices, and that's why we link with uh, the master students and master programs, so they have written the thesis in different different uh, places, and those things also available in University of Oslo and here. Uh, PhD thesis, the articles. So it's very close related to how do we get these things also to distribute in another way. But it's not pulled in everything together in one place, but like you have detailed implementation guidelines, and then once you contact, we can give you more assistance on the particular uh, programs or things. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Any questions? Yes. Oh, one second. <laughs> so 
I was just wondering, in order to get a support if you're struck while implementing, is there any kind of a forum, community forum, whereby people yes, will discuss yes. any issues and all? Now we'll talk about this uh, forum and like we'll enroll everyone into that particular forum in the last uh, two days, in the next couple of weeks. We have DHS developer list, we have DHS user list, we have too many forums and things where you can like link that. We have Launchpad and all the source code and everything is upside. It's not on the DHS website? It's also in DHS website. But like in DHS website, like you will say, like if you want to support, like because DHS website is just like where you look at the information, eh? But like you want to join for a like a say support team, yeah. So then like people will ask question saying like I can't log in, I have problems. So like the whole community can can uh, answer. Okay. So we want to enroll everyone on the DHS user list, and for developers you have a DHS developer list. Okay. But like the developer list, it's, it's uh, as Martin and other people say, it's it's too too much, eh? Every time they commit, you'll get a pop-up mail. So uh, in a day, you'll have nearly three to 400 emails. And so just make sure <laughs> you have a filter in your mailbox, or else will be shh, too much. So we have those forums, and we'll need to tell you about that. OK, any questions? Actually, next time, I guess like we'll move, and we'll start teaching from there. Because uh, always in the back, it's, it's, uh, we always used to say in the college, backbench people. And <laughs> I was one, and uh, now it's, it's the same. So we need to switch the backbench. From uh, next day, I guess like we'll start presenting there. OK? What things should we keep in mind when integrating DHIS with other systems? For example, if we are using some other system and we want to use DHIS for aggregate reporting, then how should we how should we think to start implementing DHIS for that existing system? Because we already have some variables and all those things. So how should this communication between DHIS and other system happen? Um, yeah, actually, it's, it's um, different ways to start with it. Like in, uh, in India, when I was working over there, the different state has their own system. And we don't say, like, use DHIS for your, for your everything. Uh, because you have to always see what kind of uh, capacity and training program has already gone through. For example, like a state, Tamil Nadu, uh, in southern India, they had already gone to their software. They had made the software. But the software was very good in data entry. Yeah. But like you could not produce any kind of analysis or the report. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we don't want to say, OK, now use DHIS. But like that means like you have to redo the whole the training program and everything. So what we said, OK, then this software was done by TCS. And we said, OK, you use those data item and everything. And like what we did, we, uh, first thing is to collect the, to get the institutional linkages between uh, a higher person saying that, OK, he agrees to, to merge. So data entry happens here, and report and analysis can happen in DHIS. Yeah. yeah, first we get that consensus, and then talk to the boss of the people to share the data model and see like how best the both technical people can work through. Technical integration is very, very easy. But the institutional in in integration is very hard. Yeah. So even though the top person, he said, like, OK, we agree. And then the people were not so happy to give the data model or anything. And then we say, OK, you don't have to give the data model. You sit over there. What do you do? We can make a soft bridge where you can export the data into a particular XML file. And we take the XML file and import it into DHIS. So we have to find out a real solution. Sometimes what happens, we can directly, the people will give the access to the database, and we can take the data directly. But most of the, the places, they don't allow that. They say, no, 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 our data model is our data model. We don't want to share, uh, share with you. We say, OK, fine. Uh, you have an export mechanism. Please export in these things. And we agree upon a standard. OK, this is standard. Is that OK? They didn't even know DFX. So then we have to go with XML. And, and then, yeah. So uh, based on like what they know, they can export it in that particular format. And the DHI side, the community can like, come around and write some small code and the module where we can import the data into DHIS. For example, in, uh, at your case, like you have the data in uh, OpenMRS, yeah. and we aggregate and import in DHIS, that's fine, because OpenMRS is also free and open source. Yeah. But if you're dealing with uh, proprietary-based uh, software, this is other case. 
So it's usually case to case basis we can try to integrate. So we but like yeah. one of the main thing what you have to try to understand is what kind of effort the user has to go through. One of the things we have to always say for the user, it should look like one system. Should not look like a two different system when you try to integrate okay. because then you can't not say, okay, log in here and also log in over there and we can try to have uh, same uh, things. And more about this one, Yon will talk on uh, Tuesday on the integration. Okay, you had one more question? Fine. Okay. Any questions? That'd be me. So how um, how do we get organized for the users to to learn the HIS2? Is it working? <laughs> well, f first uh, let's let's cut a myth. It's not in tra in trainings you you're learning things obviously, but. The mo most of what you learn is on s is on site while you're working, right? So uh, super users should be, or you should uh, you should uh, you should help your colleagues while working, and not 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 just during the trainings. You know, it's not two separate lives. It's a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, you need to do that yeah. consistently. The strategic choice. I think that uh, John can uh, can definitely uh, talk about that one. I hear like in the bus services about Android and device. Okay, the first thing is about the national HMIS team. It's very very important for to organize this national HMIS team, and this HMIS team should. Uh, should be accountable for running DHIs. Eh? If server goes down, other uh, things like the whole team should be in place. Uh, also, like there has to be public health person who can understand what these things is, and some of the uh, like statisticians, um, uh, technical people, and the implementers. We try to get get around here, who understands the local context. Also, so it's very very important to to have to form a national core team. Like for example, in um, I can uh, give. Um, have a mic. Yeah. I can give you a chance to explain uh, the process in uh, Laos because just now they created the national core team. You can say something about the. Uh, okay, so in in Laos we we withdraw the uh, national core team from different uh, MOS departments aside from already existing the. Uh, which we call uh, statistic unit, which is come under the Department of Planning and International Cooperation. Just only a few people, but definitely uh, the, the loan is, f uh, is uh, consolidated the whole HMIS uh, data for the whole country, but it is not enough. So we have to also get some people from the uh, uh, existing department like uh, healthcare department, hygiene department, and finance department to include in that team. Also, we have uh, other form also center of uh, MCS center. And if you want to to expand to the whole countries, we also need to have uh, uh, also connecting with other other ministry like uh, other ministry uh, uh, communication and transportation. Uh, we, we have the contact with the e-government to set up the server in the in, in the country for the running the system. Yeah. Actually, like in Laos, like you also have like with different ministry, you know, uh, the ego center is with the telecommunication ministry. So we have included there to here to form a national core team. So always when you're trying to fi find a national core team, based on your context, identify who are the different key stakeholders whom we can include it. 
Sometimes, like say, okay, this particular department is too strong, we can also include them, it's fine. It's just a collaborative effort to form this one. This is nothing to do with DHIs, eh? but like it's, it's uh, about HMI's implementation. So you define like how do you want to bring, like in your organization or in your, in your country, you have to set up your core team. We can ask as, uh, uh, you can uh, be more like a helper and also TOTs. So they will train the trainers. So we train the national core team and they will take the, the whole responsibility. And then they can train the TOTs of TOTs. So they can train the provincial people and provincial people can train the, the district. So depending on the different ways, you can try to do it, okay? National core team, support. We can also have, like national core team is a big, huh? You can also have a support team, small support team, like eGov. Like in uh, Laos, I'm taking this example often, like just like <coughs> national core team, like we have some members from different places. And support team can be like the national informatics center or uh, uh, e-government center where user can call and say, can you please support me? I can't able to log in. Can you please uh, give us uh, a bit more training? Can you support? So that's a support team. And then the local uh, users. So like for example, at the district level or the province level in the health department try to use it. Yeah. So you can have uh, various levels of this thing. This is very important. This one support team, one person from there, one person around here. National core team is always good because like then we, most of the information will be asked. Give me this report. Send me, give me these things. Uh, we have to produce the national uh, year statistical book. So all those things, these people will be helpful. Supporting is down the implementation side. Running of DHIs. Eh? This one is running of the HMIs and the whole thing. And then the local users and things to support locally. Fine. So John, John was talking about setting up a national team, and and then the the last the last bullet points were uh, were local super users, right? So um, local super users who will uh, who will support the users, who will train the users. Obviously, you need to identify the right people who are good at DHIS two, and that uh, that's a no brainer. And uh, try to look within your teams to uh, look for the ones who are, uh, f um, well, whom other people ask, uh, ask uh, assistance for. Um, organize forum for exchange of experience. That's also something that uh, can be done through your support team or your, your national, national champion team. And uh, use messaging from DHI within DHIS2, as uh, we showed you in the previous presentation. One very important uh, point is uh, the make them uh, make their training part of uh, of their job an official uh, an official job, right? So uh, not just a side thing that they do like that, because uh, then you can you can bring up people. And uh, we're here also. That's what we're doing today. Huh? Cultivate uh, cultivate super users. So doing. Uh, Today, it's not an advanced training, but uh, the goal is that after a few months, you go to, you as super users, you go to your, to an advanced academy, and then you come back with more knowledge, and then you can, tran you can transfer this knowledge to, uh, to users. <coughs> and obviously, never do a training just by yourself, or try not to, because you don't know everything, you don't have the whole uh, scope, and if, if, uh, Things happen in life, uh, you always need to have somebody that can take over. So uh, assistance, uh, I'll try to bring somebody with you during the different training so that, uh, so that they can take over in case. So identify, organize, authorize, and cultivate super users is, uh, is key, obviously, and that's, that's you. Um, yep. Uh, the battery is running low. Uh, this one, authorize, it's very, very important. Because most of the time when we say, like, okay, we give them the training program, he's very good in DHIS and technical, like, okay, we say, can you please support him? Then the person can't say no to the boss. They always say, yes, yes, yes. But like he 
is not high, does not have any authorization because he already has 10 jobs, <laughs> yeah, 10 tasks, 10 things to look at. And if you add one more thing on him, he will always say yes, yes. <laughs> but like uh, we have to always make it authorized. Eh? National court team and things, people have to have a uh, power to authorize, saying that not everyone, but like few people to say, okay, we authorize this person from this particular department to be part of DHR's training program to support this thing. Yeah, and also always include uh, a few incentives. Eh? Just like not not only authorize and things, okay, no, no, you have to go there, but like try to include some incentive, eh, taking for the academy or uh, giving more training, uh, making it uh, more uh, visible. Incentives is not always linked with uh, money. Eh? It's, it's g money is also a, a small part, but it's also uh, encouraging for the f further studies, bringing it to the further academy, yeah, making him uh, responsible for one particular province. So it's also one kind of incentives. Eh? So once you identify a good person, organize and authorize the, the person to to do it, or else it'll be gone by there. Yeah, let me just change this. So then, once this, w once you have a rollout DHIS two, obviously you need um, you need follow up. Okay, you need that uh, after the initial setup and training, you need to send people uh, on the field for for to follow up that um, that users are using the DHIS two the right way. And to support uh, to support users because again it's not in five days that you that uh, that users will uh, will learn perfectly how to use the HIS2. It requires experience and it requires basically people to start punching in data, for instance, or generating reports. And uh, and that's it's only when when your users will start using the system uh, to produce things that uh, that other other type of uh, questions will raise, and then you need to have uh, you need you need to support them in these within these uh, the, this uh, well during this uh, period, and as well when as you know every three months we release a new version of DHIS two, and sometimes m releases are major releases like radical change on the on the design or of the interface or brand new features. Uh, and there, obviously, you cannot expect your users to uh, to, to 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 train themselves. Huh? You need to go there, and uh, you need to uh, you need to train them on these new features. So each time there's a major change, uh, please follow up uh, follow up this change with the with the training. It doesn't mean to it needs to be five days training. Huh? It's just to send us local support in the in the office and. And often when you do that, you see also the condition of uh, work for, for this, uh, at this workplace, and then you can understand other, th other things that can, can help you to, uh, to, improve, uh, to improve the use of DHIS2. Obviously, uh <coughs> support must be uh, mainly done by uh, the local teams uh, through help desk and through super users. Depending on your, on your countries, uh, you will... Uh <coughs> You have hot, sorry. <coughs> you have set up some uh, call centers or hotlines, to uh, so that the users can call, and uh, again uh, use the internal tools of DHIS2 like mes DHIS2 messages, and uh, the the community through uh, DHIS2 uh, user user and developers uh, mailing lists or forums. Another example from Malawi. <laughs> <coughs> Choose the people that 
choose the right they might be angry sometimes you know so choose the people that go in uh, the training typically uh, that's, that's a f obviously just a fun fun picture from Malawi but uh, the idea here is obviously to send the people who are who are working with the IJS2 to the trainings not only the the bosses right not the ma only the management I let you read huh? yeah So we, we, which obviously leads me to the to the timing of your training and who to train. So if you train to uh, right way before the rollout, people will forget because they will have no practice. So we're training for five or ten days, and then we go back to our countries, or you go back to your to your central level, and uh, and people don't practice. And uh, and then we you can do the same job every week. You can do the same job huh? because uh, they will lose. They will lose the the interest. First, they will lose the interest, and then they will they will uh, forget how to to work with it. At the same time, don't do it after the rollout, obviously, because if they receive the letter saying that they have to punch data, for instance, or how they have to generate reports through the system, and they haven't been trained, uh, they will be frustrated because uh, the training comes too late. Um, fire <coughs> tra sorry, train the right people uh, because if you're training people who will never use the HIS2 but are just there for other reasons, obviously, it's first it's uh, inefficient or ineffective, and it's demo it might even be demotivating for the for the people who are part of your training. So, uh, and one one point that. Uh, Probably John has had probably gone through this one as he has done so many implementations. Is that it's very what, what, what we we see in trainings is that uh, sometimes we have to start with the very basic IT level. So sometimes it's uh, it's frustrating even for us because we want to talk about DHIS two, but then we talk about how to log in. Now so it's uh, when you identify the users that you're going to train. Make sure that one of the prerequisites is that they they know a minimum how to use uh, a, a computer and how to go on the internet. Yeah, it looks like obvious, it's, uh, but uh, it's now like it was. It's a bit different because everyone knows about computer. But like uh, ten years back when I started, like it's uh, it was very very different. Huh? I don't know like how things are. Maybe different countries have different uh, things. When we first started, the the people took the mouse and then was just like. <laughs> And then we have to just organize how to use the mouse, hey? you know, like is. And then we split the screen and say, first you take the mouse in this big box, and then you come down and down. And it was just two days only on how to use the mouse. Hey? So it is. It was just uh, very basic of computers, what it is, and then, and you can always say, hey, the coffee holder in the in the computer is not working. I said, coffee holder in the computer? Like, like they everyone had the, this desktop, and you know, and it's just the coffee holder is not working. I can't keep my coffee anymore. <laughs> I say, what? <laughs> coffee all than the coffee? It's just the, the disk drive, you know? Like when you press, it just <laughs> come out. So they used to keep the keep it as a coffee. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, they, you, you will find this one. But like now, I guess like it, it's more people and more and more people uh, know about computers and all. But like, please do a check huh? before when you start with uh, the training program. So what we did uh, in the in the place uh, in India, like we had this. Uh, the small um, training institutes, uh, private training institute, Aptech, NIT. I guess like NIT is also there here in Vietnam. So we organize the, the people to just have four days or five days of basic computer training first. And uh, how do you enter the data? What is a keyboard? What is a monitor? And like how do you use the mouse? And how do you enter the data? Like what is the keyboard and things? So first you do that one. And then once you identify, the people okay have the skill and things and then you can start with the DHIs, eh? Because like then it'll get really, really frustrated because part of the the, tra uh, the participant they are very good and other half like they can't even uh, move the mouse. Then it becomes very bad. So people some people get really frustrated because they say, I oh, know these people and then other people get like unhappy because they're not in the same speed. So always look into your participants when you're organizing the training program. 
make sure just to have a small form filled up before the training program. Just you can create. You have a basic knowledge of computer or what do you things have? Like just like uh, have a small uh, form which they can fill it up and then you can uh, organize your training program because it's organized training program is costlier, right? Eh? So when you organize training program and uh, you don't you have wrong audience, it becomes very very bad. So it's it's good that like you take a bit more time to specify uh, to identify your participants who should come and like what kind of uh, skills they have. And then, like you can try to organize uh, based on that one, because if it's very good to have a basic of computers and everything also included. Eh? Yeah. And the one more, yeah. You take this one. One more thing, like usually, like what happens during the training program in the HIS, we always tell them to come with their actual data, two months or three months of actual data, and then you enter the data. Always, all training program has to be practical oriented. <coughs> yeah, tell them to get their data before you have the training program. Make sure you set it up right, so that the the form what they are bringing up, they have the field to enter. Okay, first, don't start like here. This is advanced, eh? or like uh, this is uh, a bit advanced because we went through data elements and everything. But like when you start with your training program in your country. Don't start with DHIS, data elements, indicator, or grid, because that is already fixed. They don't have to, uh, to know about that. You can go directly to data entry yeah, and output. Usually, it's better to also to show some of the output. Oh, these are the different outputs what you can uh, develop after this one day or two days of training program. Because we can't organize 10 days of training program in our country because it's, it's too expensive and the people will be always busy. Yeah. Tell them always to bring some of the reports what they need to generate and some of the data what they want to enter. And then, it, even if it is fine, take some time, let them enter the data. Enter the data and then generate the report and they'll be feel happy. Yeah, so when they enter the data, it's they'll see, okay, before it will, was taking three days, now in 10 minutes I can make my report. So it's, it's a good motivation for also the people to, to see. And then, during the data entry, it's very, very important because then they can check the org unit, whether the name is spelling right or wrong. They can check the data entry screen, whether everything is right, they are comfortable with. And then like we can start the training program and like starting the data entry directly. Okay? So always when you conduct a training program, try to get the form. Their actual form. Yeah. So then they can start doing the, the data entry for them. So then, like they see how things are, and then. okay. Yeah. Train groups of people, groups of users. Don't don't train individual, huh? because. Uh, if you train individuals, the individuals then will leave for some reason, and then you have trained for nothing. So uh, make sure that uh, make sure that when you go into uh, into a local facility or at the district level, you actually train a whole group of people, and then they will learn from learn from each other. That's why we put you into groups. Is because the learn learning process is much more efficient if you are working together as if you're working individually. Um, moreover, it, it, uh, it gives the habit of working with others. And uh, again, there's a reason why during this training we put, uh, we put you in groups from different backgrounds, IT, information and health. It's uh, it's because uh, we need this mixed competence when we deliver a training. So uh, maybe John has a few comments on this one. It's fine. Because like it's it's uh, always important because when you're talking about like if a pure IT person talks about the DHIs, then I'll be focusing only on the tool. Eh? Like how, what's the tool is, like here is the data entry, you click here, you get the chart. Like the chart what I showed uh, before, eh? makes no sense at all. So it's always good when you have a trainer's training, like you have a, a bit of health program who understands the health. 
Yeah, like he's, he might not be a medical doctor, but things like a person who understands how does the system or the data should behave. It's always good to have that person and also statisticians and information system. Like, because like you go to one particular place who does not have any context, uh, co uh, the knowledge of the context, and then you say, okay, you have to do the data entry, this thing, and then there is no power at all in the, in the particular things, and there are different ways to deal with it. So it's always good to have the combination of the three things. I know you did this a bit on the first day, but it would be interesting maybe just to do it again a little bit. Can we, can we have a quick show of hands of who considers themselves to be in the different groups a little bit? So if you take IT specialists in, in this room now? Up, IT specialists, how many? Yes, okay, uh, and, uh, let's, let's see. No, no, just, just keep it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right. Uh, thank you. Um, and I, I just wanted to know those people also because I think I think maybe we'll do a little bit of uh, special sessions in par in parallel, focusing on some very technical issues that I think will be boring for most of you. Uh, so so maybe some of those people can come and talk to me and uh, Morton a little bit now in the break after. Then information officers, how many? Who, who are the information officers? Just one. Just one information officer. No, 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 one, no, two, everyone. three, okay, okay, very good. Okay, no, quite, actually quite most a lot. are information officers. Yes. <laughs> Health <laughs> management people. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, in a handful, yeah, that's good. Okay. So it's it's Im and some people actually straddle roles etc but but it, it is still very useful to have have these categories and, <coughs> and 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 consider that you actually have everything covered the whole all groups are important. Yeah. And actually like it's the basic thing is we have this uh, pure technical session about like i reports and the things so uh, that we will try to take care of that. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, before training, you you cannot just show up into a into a facility or a, at the district and just call for a few people for a training. Yeah? Um, it needs to be prepared. If we, you need to define and communicate the goals of your training, uh, define them, communicate communicate them, and obviously then refine them according to uh, to your f to the feedbacks. Uh, based on these goals, you need to define the objectives of your training so that the the attendants know why they are there, um, and um, yeah, and obviously uh, know know your audience not only from a not only from uh, from a background perspective, but also what type of issues do they uh, do they face if uh, the DHIS two has already been rolled out. Um, as uh, John and uh, Christine were mentioning, uh, very important that uh, they uh, they come with their data. Uh, so that uh, you can go through the data, and um, and yeah, and then uh, meaning that you need to adapt your trainings <coughs> to the local context. Obviously, you will not bring us pre predefined PPTs that you will just show like that. You will need to to uh, you will need to adapt. Um, yeah, and uh, and as uh, as John and Christine were saying. Don't train, don't train your users the way you have been trained here. Okay, it's not, uh, or at least not on the same topics. You can use the method methodology, obviously, but don't train on the same topics. No, nobody, no, nobody <coughs> who is supposed just to enter data will be interested in creating a data set. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, first, uh, they will probably not understand, and uh, and then you will completely demotivate them. So. Uh, Focus, focus on 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 their tasks and deliver the training according to their tasks and their needs. Break. So a few tips. <coughs> 
at least one tip here. When you start when you start training, you need to motivate people for the training. Uh, if you start if you start to train people who are supposed to enter data in uh, data sets, and you start your training with telling them how to enter data, they will be very unhappy actually because they know how to enter data. But wha what's what's the what's the big plus of DHAS2 uh, compared to the current environment? Probably is the fact that they can have access to some outputs on of uh, of their work. They can see reports meaning that they can see that the data that they are punching in are actually data that is useful. Now you you start to create you start to create uh, another relationship then with the with the work they're doing, you know. They they feel <coughs> sorry, they feel that they have uh, they bring something to the to the system. So when you start demonstrating the DHIS2 for instance, you start with the dashboard with a pivot table and then you go back, uh, this, this dashboard is constituted of uh, different uh, categories, of different data elements, etc. And, uh, and these data elements, categories, can be shown, uh, come from, uh, are, have been aggregated through different data sets, and so on and so forth. And that way you go down to, uh, to the actual work of, uh, of the users you're training. As you've seen here, most of the time is hands-on, it's practice. So you practice a lot because if you just deliver a message, it doesn't mean people can have conceptually understood, doesn't mean that they will be able to reproduce what, the, what you've done. Explain before, so again, as we've done here, a few slides, a few, few slides before to, to go through the theoretical things and then hands-on, and then assignment, and then we, we explain after through a quiz, and we explain the answers of this quiz, just to make sure that the learning process goes smoothly. QXLITIS, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that later. And uh, push your users, push the users you're training, push them to actually show how things are going, how things are being done. So don't hesitate to to uh, interact with the with the participants, obviously. And yeah, as uh, as you know, uh, we won't, you won't, and even we won't remember everything of uh, what we have done during these ten days. So uh, point them towards the documentations and obviously towards yourself and your local support team that you have put together, your help desk.